Okay, friends, welcome back to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment. By now, most subscribers are used to the, the channel. We are going to go around and try to execute advanced tactics to try to survive this, this deathmatch campaign that I'm in. Um, for new, new watchers, I'm in a campaign where I'm giving a battle to seven different kingdoms at the same time. And to say it's difficult is an understatement. Uh, you know, it's virtually constant siege. Uh, I'm very late campaign, and the enemies at this stage have gotten uh, larger than my own kingdom, and so the onslaught is more or less permanent. Uh, I, I virtually run around uh, from one large battle to the next. Uh, I just got a message saying that Kuzait, uh, the Kuzait were sieging this castle, so we're going to go take a look here. Looks like, looks like there are more fucks on the way. Um, uh, yes, they have a. I can't really tell what's going on. They have. They have one huge army and a bunch of supporting armies. And there's a whole bunch of Sturgia here too. I'm not sure if Sturge is at war with them. Sturge is my only ally in this campaign. Uh, if you can call if you can call them my ally, I, I, maybe that's too strong a word. We'll, we'll put it this way, we're, we're on neutral terms. And so a lot of times, uh, get the fuck, get over here. I'm trying to add this companion. A lot of times Sturge is at war with the Kuzate and I end up helping them. But in this case, it, it seems like they're just going to watch with their popcorn. Uh, so we're coming in here. We've got a force of about 16, 1500 maybe. And uh, we'll see just how large this Kuzate force is. Okay. So even with the help of the garrison and the militia, uh, we're, we're outnumbered about 2 to 1. Um, I need to adjust my inventory here. After a recent battle, I, I let go of my polearm. We're going to get our polearm resituated. And then we'll adjust our our player damage. I thought it was set to half. So we're going to play with normal player damage. Uh, that's what that's what most subscribers and watchers want to see. So we're going to we're gonna run normal player damage as often as it's uh, reasonably possible. Uh, it, it may end up, you know, that, that I get dropped halfway through this fight. And... Uh, uh, you know, I can't show you tactics through the whole thing. I'm still working on acquiring the RTS mod that lets you take over another character after you get dropped, uh, but I still, at this point, don't have it yet. Uh, so, my situation here is not particularly good. You can see I'm kind of backed into a corner of land here. I have virtually no choice but to cross this bridge and try to try to resituate. Uh, fighting down in this little, little trapped area would be completely uh, a death trap. So, we're going to race across the bridge here. Difficult part with this is that I think because they they might come across both bridges and try to hem us in here. Uh, obviously, we're outnumbered about two to one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use some cavalry and a shield wall. You see me do this a lot, right? There are endless uses for this, and all I'm doing with them is sort of stalling the enemy attack in case they come tearing in here with a bunch of oh shit, flying horse. Uh, in case they come flying in here, you know, with a bunch of, of heavy heavy cavalry, the more likely threat is their horse archers. But we've got a nice little hill, a downslope hill, so we'll take advantage of this. We'll just drop down here and uh, try to situate ourselves. Obviously, this is not how you want to start a battle. We're, we're basically running from the get-go, uh, but the, the map, the AI, put us in such an, an awful spot um, that we're going to sort of shift on the fly here and look for a better opportunity. Uh, a, a large part of tactics has to do with uh, choosing where to fight and where not to fight. You don't want to fight in highly inopportune locations. I got some cavalry trying to cross the bridge here, so we'll definitely uh, be attacking them. Send in these cavalry against them. Try to prevent them from getting in too deep. So it's not a very big wedge of cavalry, but we don't need them fucking up our setup. If Kazate comes to our location here, preferably from from the left of the screen, not the right, uh, they will have to cross this murderous bridge uh, to get to us, and, and that will be highly advantageous to our tactics, even with their multitude of archers. Uh, unfortunately, they are coming up from the south. They are crossing the same bridge I crossed, and so we're not going to have a bridge battle here. Um, we are going to be fighting them in the open field. The good news is that their horse archers typically stay to the left side of the battlefield, right? The, they circle counterclockwise around the army that you're in's left. And so in this case, they can't circle us. 
so that's that's definitely to our advantage you know they can come up and do some shooting and then fall back uh, but this is far better than having them circle behind us and shoot us full of arrows uh, people have asked for other videos on how to how to deal with Kuzate in that situation and I have produced a few videos and we'll we'll uh, we'll try to produce, produce a few more in the, in the future I've got my fifth core in the back here I haven't been doing this a lot lately, but long battles, especially against the Kuzate, I like to take an entire archer corps, it's about 50 guys, uh, and have them in the rear with the gear uh, on hold fire. But, and I'm not going to use them, at least early in the battle, at least until it gets hot and heavy, at least until it's obvious that I need to use them. Uh, there's a possibility that I end up needing them later as the battle gets hot and heavy. Okay, so the enemy's definitely moving in a large tranche of, of infantry and uh, cavalry. But they don't have a lot of support. They've got some cavalry coming in here, but they're being met by my cavalry in the shield wall. Um, so that's, that's not too big of a concern. Take out some of these stragglers. If they want to come and just... Oh shit, kill my old guys a lot. If they want to just come in and, and fight us hand to hand, we walk them. In fact, they're just pushing right through my cavalry here with their infantry. So we're going to pull back, and now we're going to do a concentrated attack. Right? These infantrymen just killed themselves. They ran through my cavalry, and now they're sandwiched between my first corps, which is infantry, and my sixth, which is savage javelin throwers. Look at they're just trapped. And my cavalry. All I did is took those cavalry in a line and pulled them towards me and told them to attack. And this. Because they for us literally just committed suicide. I don't know if some of these guys just got like turned down for their, by their uh, their girlfriend, you know, for a date or something. But that was a suicidal move. Dude, these guys just completely killed themselves. Uh, I think maybe they got three or four kills in them. So thanks, thanks for that. When the enemy makes mistakes, right? We don't interrupt them, at Napoleon. Uh, and they have this huge block of horse archers here. We are going to aggressively push into this. I'm dragging cavalry behind them. Because these fucks are dead too. If they want to stand still, with our archers just raining down death on them, they're fucked. Uh, horse archers are, are pretty good archers, but obviously they're not as good as uh, most foot archer troops. And if they're standing still, <laughs> they're just a bigger archer. Oh shit, I lost my horse already. Damn, there must have been a savage blow if someone hit me. Uh, so we're going to fly in here. <laughs> Look at my infantry's. Is <laughs> very happy to come to grips with them, but they can't move. Uh, the enemy at this stage is, is fighting this fight like, like dumb and dumb. Uh, I mean, they're trapped, they're hemmed in. Look at all the guys are pinned on the bridge. Uh, you know, half of this was our, was our setup, but it, it, it gave the possibility of us having the enemy cornered and trapped like this. The other part, though, is that the enemy just acted like absolute buffoon here. It acted like, a, a, you know, he was called to right? Just a complete disgrace, disorder, and they, they pretty much accomplished the same thing, which is to say nothing. Uh, so now they're fleeing. They got completely massacred. Uh, hopefully they, they demote whoever was in charge of field command for their side, because that was embarrassing. Uh, but we're not going to move. I, I've, got, I've got archers not positioned on that wall. We're going to give them a shield wall uh, cavalry protection here. You've seen me do this before if you watch some of my videos. I like to put shield walls in front of archers, uh, particularly if the archers are a little elevated above. That way the archers can sort of shoot above, but some of the enemy arrows will still find our shields. and fire a few javelins across this river. Uh, but at this stage, the enemy is going to have to regroup. I mean, we just vanquished their, their main uh, force uh, in, of infantry in like 30 seconds. It committed suicide, effectively. And then their horse archers got pinned and hemmed up against the bridge. Uh, and it was like a traffic jam in a snowstorm where, you know, those pileups were like a hundred cars in a row all pile up and, and everybody gets, gets injured or killed and, and has no idea what to do. Well, that was, that was what just happened to their, their archers, their horse archers. Oh shit, I dropped my axe. I, I have a tendency to do this in battles. I gotta go look for it later on. Fortunately, I remembered where I put it. They're sweeping in with horse horse archers, but you know they they might as well they might as well fucking siege the moon with that tactic. But they have absolutely no chance of hurting us. All right, they're sending some heavy cavalry though. I want to stop this from just pouring across the bridge uh, on mass. You know, with my archer heavy force, I don't want heavy cavalry just trouncing through our our ranks, right? So I put these cavalry up. And I turned them away. I imagine they're going to come back. So I'm also dragging the first infantry here. 
because if their cavalry tries to come across, it's going to meet with the same disaster that the rest of their forces have so far. Bridge battles are strong against... Oh shit, that guy came in here and just killed people. You fuck. Uh, bridge battles, of course, are, are pretty lethal against any, uh, any kingdom. But in this case, where it's like horse archers and other soft characters, they have absolutely no chance. Not a job like that. One for everybody. Sometimes it's nice they'll drop a big bag full of javelins, so you, you throw one and you get six more. Uh, they're just going to pack themselves up here and get shot with javelins, huh? Alright, so we'll, we'll manage our ammunition. Right? We're going to unload when there's a bunch of these guys, and when there's not, we'll hold fire until there's basically more more fish uh, in, the, in the barrel to shoot at. And these fucking dipshits one at a time. Again, I'm, I'm pretty sure this enemy is suicidal. Maybe they got some new medication from their doctor that makes them suicidal or something. These guys are, are flying in here uh, like two at a time into heavy, heavy infantry <laughs> and just getting obliterated. It ain't gonna work, folks. Now, sometimes I like to fight uh, the battle from the side of my enemy. Like, what would I do here? Well, for sure, I'd be utilizing the other bridge, right? We'd be coming in down back where we came originally, right? And I'd be circling around. And if, then if the enemy, or in this case, if, if the group that I'm defending was a, was a human player, if they put too much defenders on the other bridge, we would try to storm this bridge and sandwich the enemy. Right. So I got infantry now wedged on the bridge. We got a nice pack. Of, of shield walled archers that are basically just going to create a traffic jam there. I don't have very many archers left, so I'm kind of managing the numbers that I do. I still want that group over there defending those archers. Again, I'm doing my best to, to manage my ammunition here, trying to pick up javelins when I can. Uh, sometimes battles against the Kuzate end up being a little bit of a, a war of attrition, a long range attrition, right? They're archers, some of them have have two bags of arrows, right? So they're going to be firing arrows for a long time. Um, and you just kind of have to deal with that. Uh, and to be, in all honesty, I, I kind of find it slow and, and dull compared to a lot of other uh, fights against other kingdoms. It depends on the situation, of course. If you're in the open field, a battle against the Kazates can be pretty riveting because uh, th you know they'll send their vanguard right in your face at the same time as slamming you with heavy cavalry and shooting you in the back with archers. Right? It's 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 why uh, you know it's why the the Mongols were so fucking dominant. Uh, you know they they just mastered riding a horse with with archers, uh, and they had so much control of it that their guys, by and large part, yeah. good luck, dude. By and large part, uh, didn't have to even hold the rein. Right? They would just sit there on their horse, kind of holding on, and fucking unload on people with their arrows. And they just got to a point where they were super coordinated and you know, dominated most of uh, Eastern Europe and all of Russia for a couple hundred years. Uh, I mean, if you, if you study history, you can sort of find parallels to the different kingdoms. And it's pretty obvious that the, the Khazates are, are based after... Uh, the con the consultant and uh, you, know, you know most of the the Mongol Empire. So their main infantry block is coming across, um, and we're going to bait them. I actually want them to come across. We're going to set up a little flanking action here. I'm going to have the sixth and eighth. We're going to pull to the right side. I want that infantry mass to come down into this murderous hail of darts. I don't want too many cavalry coming across, but I can actually see the cavalry stuck in the back there. We'll have to deal with them eventually, but this this vanguard presents a far bigger problem. If I just left my guys on the bridge, we would take serious losses. So we're, we're coming around on the right flank here with the 6th and 8th Corps, and now we're charging. Right? We're charging in with the 1st Infantry and a couple of cavalry, and in we go. Right? We're going to do as much damage as we can. The archer, just the 4th archers, are up in that ridge still shooting. Calvary here I gotta take care of. It's a pretty, this is a pretty thick wave of enemy infantry and it's tough infantry. Like every other guy has a fucking huge, huge uh, shield in case it after my companions. I usually uh, attack enemies that are on my companions very aggressively. Uh, my companions uh, 
part of my eighth core are very powerful, very strong warriors, but they can be killed too. Uh, and so when I see them under attack like this again, I like to fly into battle a, a little bit recklessly you know, because uh, you know if we survive, the more of us survive, the better chances we all have. So their cavalry is kind of bottled up here. Uh, their infantry is definitely being contained. Let's go ahead and get another flanking action here. Let's bring guys over to the, their, the enemy's left flank. Flanking is like one of the most critical and basic maneuvers uh, in warfare. In this case, I'm actually bringing an entire archer corps. Uh, sometimes having archer corps on both sides of the bridge can get some really nasty enfilade, uh, uh, aka flanking uh, shooting. But the guys can shoot all of the enemies that are on the bridge from the side. A lot of those guys will be pointing their shield a different way, right? so they get smoked with arrows. Like you can see these guys are getting smoked by archery fire. I mean, I'm going to fly in here because I, I basically have support. I have invisible support. They might swing their sword, and before they can land it, they're going to get shot in the throat by you know a, a, one of my archers on the, in the flank back there. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't always feel like you have support, but if you have archers behind you, it's sort of like invisible support. Get a little carried away with the 8th and 1st Corps. I don't actually want to cross the bridge here. Not yet. Not until the enemy's clearly reeling. Uh, they're still sending pretty high level troops. I see level 4, level 5s. There's cataphracts in there. They have some, you know, some pretty decent troops left. So we're going to continue to bleed this for us until there's a more opportune time to, to be aggressive and take the offensive. At this stage, folks, from playing this so often, and I hope this isn't a spoiler, this battle is over. The only way they're going to win uh, and it's like 1%, is if they have some kind of d devastating coordinated attack that catches me off guard, like cavalry from behind or something like that, uh, and where I, they start to overrun my forces. Because if they keep using this bridge, uh, they're obviously uh, going straight to the glue factory with all these horses. So this is no chance, not a chance in hell, uh, especially these guys coming over two at a time. Right? Like I said, Maybe they bought Bitcoin at 70,000 and, and uh, lost all their wife's money or something like that. So this is their, this is their, uh, their thought process of how to fix things. In any case, we're going to continue to hold this, this, uh, this bridge, right? This is our Alamo. Whoops. Kind of swinging my fists at him as usual. Uh, yeah, you want to come in one at a time. If you want to commit suicide, we'll help you folks. So I'm going to continue to keep this archer cord on the side here. Keep this infantry block. I love using just one big uh, infantry block as sort of my main block, my main vanguard. They're sending in a big wave of infantry. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Come on in. So we're sort of inviting them here. I'm pulling troops back again because what we're doing is we're pulling them back before we make a coordinated onslaught attack. Like if I can, I'll try to have guys follow me and we'll flank. But the big benefit is all the guys now, all of my guys, are sort of gathered up together almost like a coiled spring and we all charge and attack at once and it's just like unloosing uh, the sluice you know uh, of water and it just pours out on the enemy and just like water uh, uh, you know it, it, the, the death spam just pours up there it's like liquid coming off the, the upper right of the screen right and so they're trying to get archers over here. That that seems like a good idea, except they don't have any support at all. Like if they had some cavalry in front of them, that might benefit them. So all I did there is I just ordered in my cavalry, 8th and 6th divisions. And very quickly, those guys will be mowing down all those archers. Look at the cavalry rushing in. Uh, it's all green death spam. They're being shot full of arrows. Um, again, no chance with that, with that tactic. It was kind of a nice concept, but it's not, not going to happen. Uh, their enemy starting to pile guys up on the bridge, and, and the effect of that basically is to kill their troops faster. Right? As long as I can continue to keep that bridge uh, from being just a Swiss Swiss cheese defense, they're not getting across that fucking bridge. Uh, at this stage, I have the fifth in, the fifth archers involved again. Uh, remember earlier in the battle, I had pulled them out of the fight effectively and taken them off of auto fire. Right, I had told them to hold fire. They're now in the battle, uh, and so I'm adding all of those arrows uh, to this sort of middle, or uh, it might, might even be late stage in this battle. You know, it's really nice to have a whole nother uh, tranche of arrows, a whole nother, nother uh, army group of, with archers with full bags of quivers at a stage of the battle where, uh, you know, a lot of the other units are out of, 
they're out of ammunition. So some of these guys are definitely picking up arrows, right? I, I can see them reaching down. But more than anything, I know they've been firing arrows now for 15 minutes, and there's no way that these guys aren't out of ammo unless they're picking up arrows. Now, fortunately, because they, these horses are actually like, there's so many dead horses, it's like injuring our, our guys here, running guys over left and right. I swear, I, oh, look at these javelins flying, oh shit. Man, the shield wall did exactly what it's supposed to do, right? They sent in a big volley of, of javelins, and our guys, just like in Troy, right, with Brad Pitt, who just scoffed at their javelins, and now we're ready to unleash hell. Right? So these archers are out of ammunition, but a lot of them are Batanian team champs. We're very happy to enter combat with them, right? Again, you saw me wait for the enemy to get close. I don't want to send my enemy in piecemeal, and we all charge at the same time. Right? This is this vicious coiled spring attack, and you know it's ten deaths of the enemy for every one of ours. This might be the time now to make an aggressive push. The enemy now that's like four or five waves where they just have their ass kicked completely. I think we're going to try to push across this bridge. Uh, this can go badly. You got to be very quick, and you got to be very violent with this kind of move. Right? You want to move all your troops as quick as you can. And you want to avoid bottlenecks. So, you know, one of the ways you can do that is to make sure you don't have any units that have counter orders. Make sure you don't have any cavalry units that are just milling about or that you've told to follow you, right? And they're trying to head the other way, like some dipshit in the airport, you know, going, going uh, up the, the, or down the escalator while you're trying to go up. And it's like, come on, motherfucker. Take the stairs down and use the escalator up. Like, follow the fucking rule that the rest of uh, humanity follows. So you want to make sure and you gain a purchase on the other side of land. Now this is a little bit tenuous, but I only got about two-thirds or three-quarters of the troops across uh, before the enemy is kind of right in my face. And that's going to make it a little bit of a scrum here at the beginning. But I've got enough, I think, and the enemy is low enough level uh, that, that I don't think it's going to be too big of a concern. Uh, making sure that you're coordinated from crossing a bridge is, is critical. In fact, it's one of the first battles, one of the first decisive battles that Napoleon lost. Uh, it was called the Battle of Aspern, in which he was trying to cross a bridge, uh, wasn't able to get his troops across because the enemy purposefully sent, sent the objects floating down the, the, the river towards the bridge, broke the bridge, effectively divided uh, Napoleon's force, prevented him from getting reinforcements and ammunition and then attacked, you know, smartly attacked his force that was separated uh, and gave Napoleon, you know, his first real taste of defeat uh, in the Battle of Aspern. I think it was 1808 or 1809, uh, but very shortly after that, uh, of course, Napoleon, the master of war, called in some reinforcements in a, in a fucking flurry of orders like usual, um, made sure the bridge was fucking ironclad for his next attack, and then completely devastated uh, the enemy at the Battle of Wagram, um, which was another one of his incredible decisive victories that ultimately uh, ultimately drove his empire to, to the peak at that stage. So the enemy, it kind of looks like they're routing. Every once in a while they'll reform across the bridge. Uh, they've got, I've actually got my own troops on both sides. That's kind of, that's kind of a bitch. Uh, sometimes your reinforcements get put in wonky places. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm managing my, my reinforcements all the way across from the water here. Uh, you have to watch out for the reinforcement system. It's far from perfect. Uh, it tends to put them near where you started the battle. And if you remember, of course, we started the battle uh, kind of over here on the on the right, right? sort of uh, behind where I am right now, down that little that, that little gully down there. Right? So the enemy's not giving up yet. They're sort of spreading out into a big defensive form here. So we're crossing this second bridge. Um, we're going to go ahead and spread out. I, I got to watch my health at this stage. I'm quite injured. I, I mean, I see a lot of the enemies running, and I'd be running too if my commander fought that badly. Um, we're now nice and spread out on this side. I've got a big archer block here. My infantry's coming across. I kept them in shield wall too long. When you're trying to move troops quickly, this is an important tip. Always move them in line formation. Don't move them in a square, don't move them in shield wall. They move fastest in a line. This is true for all troops, whether it's archers, even cavalry. Yeah, you, you're running. The enemy is fleeing. Uh, this is 
ass with him. He'll kill some guys on the way out here. Uh, I'll finish that point though. When you're trying to move troops quickly, and most of the time, right, you want to move your, your troops quickly, you want to have your troops in line formation. Right? But we're going to do this. Uh, sometimes it likes to, likes to do this late in battle. Um, I'll talk about a few other things here while we, we slaughter the enemy. They like to send in reinforcements, and for some reason the reinforcements, even though they just saw 500 guys running as fast as they could away from the battlefield, you know, they're going to send in their, their unarmed horse guys here, these noble sons. Well, these must be the sons that the noble doesn't like, because these guys are absolutely butchered in, in a massacre. <laughs> yeah, and then they've had enough, too. At least they've got more sense than their stupid-ass father, sending them into battle with fucking unarmed. As a student of history, by the way, trust me, every fucking noble son had armor in battle. They all had money, and they weren't going to send their fucking prized son into battle wearing a battle. Um, so I want to say we're, we're continuing this series of, uh, of, of large-scale battles. Um, I've got a, a couple of new series that I'm, that I'm putting out, sort of rolling out over the next two or three weeks. Uh, one of them, of course, that I've already released is the Killbox series, and we'll be releasing more on that. The Killbox is, is kind of what the enemy did to themselves at the beginning of this battle, where uh, we use four, five, six, sometimes even seven, eight coordinated groups uh, to all attack a, a large concentrated force of the enemy in a timed, uh, planned manner, uh, and it can be, it can be uh, highly devastating. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to start releasing... Um, what we're calling an, our expert tactic series, uh, and these these fights are almost all meticulously fought. Uh, in most cases, um, you know, I've I've tried to use historical tactics, um, you know, whether it was something that Frederick the Great did in a certain battle in Napoleon or something like that. Uh, and these expert expert tactic tactics video, of course, are as hard as I can pull off. Right? It, it forces me uh, to try really hard to pull them off as well. Uh, but I think it demonstrates a very high level of tactical gameplay that you can pull off of Bannerlord. And, and I think, uh, I can't, I don't want to spoil too much because of course I haven't released a lot of videos. But I think the results are going to surprise and maybe even shock some viewers uh, that haven't really seen tactics in play. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you fellas next time.